Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to Papa's place. I'm out here this morning waiting on another rain to get here, it looks like. And I was just topping my hydroponic buckets here off. And I have a lot of interest, I think, wanting to follow along and see what's going on. Well, I'm going to tell you now that the plants has got to growing, and we're going to look at them close here in a minute. I'm going to do y'all a little garden video, because actually that we got a few days of sunshine. Things are starting to perk up around here. But these buckets, now that these plants is growing, every other day I got to top them off. And if y'all seen the first videos when I set these up, I put me a drain hole. Now these here that I got the cap on down here, the reason I got it capped off right now because this pepper plant ain't made enough roots for me to drain the water down that low yet. But after a rain, I have to come out here just like I pulled the cap off of whichever one just a minute ago. It may have been this one, I can't remember. I had to drain the water off of it. Because the rain feels... You don't want it to fill up with water because it's going to drown your air roots. So the reason I do it every other day, especially on them tomatoes and cucumbers, they starting to suck up the nutrients. When it goes down there about two inches, you want to top it back off. If you ever let it run all the way down here, and then you fill it back up, you'll drown your air roots. And everything has been working great so far. Now, if I was a person that just wanted to do something on a patio, this would be the way to go so far that I'm seeing. So the tomatoes actually look better than my tomatoes in the ground. Now, of course, this other stuff has had a, a harder start, even the pepper here, because we're just now getting to where our nights is warm enough to even been putting peppers out to begin with. That little pepper there was one of the last ones I put in there. And I'm thinking about, guys, taking that pepper out because I got plenty of peppers and putting me another summer dance cucumber. I like the way that's crawling up that line. Then I have another summer dance cucumber coming on later. And that's got little cucumbers on it. But the hydroponic buckets... Or someone that's just don't want a really a garden, but you could take eight buckets and do you a couple of tomatoes, maybe a couple of peppers, a couple of cucumbers, put a squash in one. I think this would be the way to go for them people that's wanting to do something on their patios and stuff, even in town where they ain't got enough room to do anything. But you know, you got a porch, especially if it's facing the sun in the morning or the evening, you got something that you could put some screws in up there and run your string up to. But I like the way this is working out. And one of these days when I show a video on my upgraded fertilizer injector, that's when I'm going to show y'all how I mix the master blend that I'm putting in here. But this is my new upgraded i've been upgrading this ever since i started making my own injector and i upgraded some more this winter and now that i done been using it and got it to where i think i want it even has its own solar powered battery charger and how y'all like my new little sink cover i built this winter i don't know if i've ever showed y'all any of that just built out of scrap metal and two pieces of scrap tin but anyway, I'm going to do a video on this on another day, but today, I'm going to, part one, I'm going to keep this video shorter. So I want to look at everything I got going on right now in the garden. So we're going to go from the sink area, back this side, <laughs> on part one, and then I'm going to continue on that side, and that'll be part two, 
and it may be two days before I post it. That way I can give two days between each video, and then I'm going to go on this morning and give an update on the outside garden, and that might be part three, or it may be in part two. It may just be two parts. But I know when I do a garden video talking about everything, I can get carried away, and it goes on too long. Plus, this will help me out on getting videos spaced out, because... Today it's wet and nasty and raining and I can't go do no yard service work nowhere, so I'd have to catch up on some videos. So I'm going to try to give y'all an aerial shot of this garden here. That way y'all kind of have an idea of where I'm at and what I'm talking about when I'm seeing the west end. I guess this would be called my northwest. That'd be called my north east. And the outside would just be my south. Maybe that's how I need to call it. But anyway, we're going to start over here. And my Freedom Art Blackberries, this is my first year that we're going to have an awesome crop of blackberries. And as you can see, that little bush is loaded. There's one I'm going to be able to eat probably this evening. This probably could be eat right now. That's about the size these Freedom Arts all over to get. But as loaded as they are this year, I don't know if they're going to all get to that size. But you can see the leaves and stuff don't look so pretty because all this rain, moisture, humidity. It's just been like living in a rainforest. Now, I ain't going to lie to y'all. I don't even know what that is. I've done plant it and replant it and move stuff around. I ain't sure 100%. I think that might be some cabbage. I, little ones that wasn't doing good. I moved them out of the bed over here to see if I could keep them going. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Also, there's some prism kale I started in this little box. Because I was going to replace some of that old. And still probably will. Some of that old out there has been getting so tall it's falling over. Replace some of it so I can keep my prism kale bed going. Then this is where I had some leftover asperbrock broccoli, which is time for me to harvest the middle heads off of all of them. On these, you go on and harvest this broccoli like it, them bite size, I call it. And once you do that, then it'll start shooting up sprouts that I have. Broccoli sprouts. Some of them call them broccolini. Broccolini. But I'll probably harvest these off today. That'll way to go on and start making all the sprouts. And there's my fig tree that I just have in the pot there. That's what I, I... Actually, that's one of the trees I had planted outside in the freeze field two years ago. And I dug it up and threw it in my compost pile. And one day I went out there and it was growing, so I put it in this pot. And I told my wife, we're just going to keep this one in the pot in here, and I'll keep it trimmed down small, and that'd just be for my garden snacks. So I got three more big trees starting out in my outside fence. And we was just right here, so now I'm going to start right down through here, and we're going to work ourselves right on over to the hydroponic buckets. That right there is my lemon balm. That's been there for since I started this little garden out here in this area. I had this little thing in the greenhouse here, and I could not get lettuce to grow this year, guys. So I brought it out here. That's my last attempt at lettuce. I brought the rest of the pack out here and spreaded it in there, and I spread it some over here. You'll see on the part two video. And some of it come up over there, and some of it didn't. But I know it's too late to be growing lettuce, but... I was going to throw it away, so I said, I'm going to see what happens. Throw the seed away. That right there are some Asian greens. And it's got some random carrots coming up in there. And a lot of random grass coming up in, in there. I can't keep up with keeping all the grass out of stuff this year. And this little bed here is some of this new squash, yellow squash I'm trying, called Criminal comes from burpee criminal yellow squash it's supposed to grow upright which i got another one planted over there got some little squash starting on it but this squash is supposed to just grow straight upright and you ain't gonna get as many squash off of it but it's more for a container and smaller places and i wanted to try it because 
I don't need that many squash at one time. Now to the right here, this is one of these beds that's been changed, dug up, replanted. You see this here, the more Asperbrock broccoli. That's the few that this whole bed was supposed to have been an Asperbrock broccoli. But between all the late heavy frost and freezes and rains, this is what four plants, the only ones that made it. This is all messed up. We got some cauliflower and we got some Calorina cabbage. Now the cabbage should have done been harvested. But that's the few plants out of the other beds that were still making it, so I just put them all in one bed just to see what's going to happen with it. But that was planted long enough for them to be cool with the crops. If them cabbage, cauliflower ought to have heads, and the broccoli ought to be way ahead of that, but I don't know. Actually, I thought something's going on with the soils in my bed, which is why I'm doing what y'all finna see next. So as I remove, it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna have to finish this video after a while when this shower passes. So what I started doing is I removed stuff out of my beds. I just started planting corn, peas, whatever. Now that one right there has got amazing sweet corn, and I ain't sure which pea that is. I think that's the Crowder peas I threwed in there. And then I had a random tomato coming up over there in the ground by my little sink area and i just stuck it in there a couple days ago don't know what kind of tomato it is but what i'm doing in these beds some corn and peas whatever i can plant in them you just but you ought to get some corn out of it but i'm just planting something that will help use up the nutrients that's in this bed because i think i may have done overdone them with the rabbit poop chicken poop quail poop in my compost, I think it's over. Done got too, too much fertilized in it, so to speak. And when I read stuff, they say if you over fertilize something, I didn't think you could over fertilize soil myself unless you was over fertilizing it with something hot and it would actually show up and be burning your plants. But the more I read about that, they say you can actually overdo it and it'll get like nutrient lock where it can't plants can't get it what they need so that's why i'm doing what i'm doing here the next bed is the same way it's actually got some pinto beans and then they wasn't coming up good and i threw some corn in there and then the pinto beans started coming up why i plant pinto beans now that ain't enough to even harvest pinto beans i just had them seeds and ain't never grew pinto beans so i just threw them in there this bed will be getting the same thing. Right now, that spinach, we about done done all we gonna do, and it never really did good. Since I didn't have no lettuce to put my pieces of spinach, that's what we always done with spinach. Most times, just cut a few leaves and mix in our salads. And on this side, it's a Savannah mustard. Now, we done cooked up a couple of messes of that, but you see it done got big enough now, it's you can still get it, it's still good and tender. But eventually that's gonna come out. It's gonna get corn and some type of beans planted in there. This first row right here is crimson spineless okra. You can see some's got more than one in it. I'm waiting on it to get a little bigger and then I'll pluck out the weakest looking one. The next row going down through here these little peppers has pretty much looked like they look today from the day I put them out. Because they shouldn't have been put out, and I knew that, but I wasn't expecting for our cool nights in the 40s to linger on as long as they was. And then with all the cloudy, rainy weather we've had, they're just stunted at a standstill. But they will catch a hope one day, and they will produce, I got confidence. But these first two, and this next one is a little bitty one, it ain't never done nothing, is an ancho pepper. And then my next two, Savannah sweet peppers, that's the one I love, cooked with and stuff. 
And like I said, just a few days of sun we got made them start looking so much better. Go in the beginning, the leaves, I mean, they just look terrible. So we got two savannah sweet peppers. The next three is going to be the hyacinator bell peppers. And I'll order to just now. We're in first week of May now. I ought to just now be planting peppers, stuff like that out. And these have been out here for eight weeks. At least eight weeks. So I got three hyacinator bales. Then I got a jalapeno pepper. Y'all see the new new leaves, how pretty they are, what's been put on in the last week. Look at this mess on the bottom. Look at how horrible that looks. And yes, I'm gonna pull all that off. I'm just trying to let it keep getting getting as much growth as it can, and then I'm gonna pull all that lower mess off because everything's starting to look better with the new growth. If it would just come on and quit this raining every other day. There's the, this one on the end. Here's a cayenne long red. The next line down through here, that's just random beans. Some of them may be pinto, some of them may be purple oil peas, some of them may be crowder peas. And the reason I'm saying that, I have planted them four or five times. And what, now you see three holes down there, or two holes, I just planted something else in yesterday i think just trying to get started too early but i wanted something to grow in them holes now we're getting into my garden and that i like we're gonna be doing two rows at a time here for these four tomatoes here two in the cages two on the strings is the hyacinators the cicada stm 2255s you see, they look they look pretty good for all they went through. Which I done took a whole lot of the bottom stuff off. But this is what it looked like. Like it's got sun scald. Because oh, we went one night from 45 degrees, guys. 45 degrees at night. And it was 80 degrees the next day, sunshine. And then it had warm nights. Then rain, rain, rain. Then we had another in the 40s the next one to it you can see these bottom leaves how, how nasty that's, that's why i was just so depressed with my garden i'm like i just need to pull everything up but i waited it out and the new leaves are starting to look good you see this one's got a couple of tomatoes on it and on the other side over there this one's got, this one actually had two decent tomatoes, and I was down here pulling them limbs off and knocked one off the other day. That one over there's got some little tomatoes on it. But everything's starting to look better. So going down these same two rows on this little arch trellis here on the south side is going to be rattlesnake green beans. Of course, I got my little pretty flowers there on each side of it. This one here, I've got four or five. That's my hyacinator cucumbers I was going to test out this year. See how they turn out. The next four tomatoes is Roma tomatoes. And you can see they got, this one here got a cluster. What is that, two, three? And here it got a cluster of four, eight, and making blooms again. That's got some turning in. We've been getting so much rain, we can't even get a bee to fly around out here pollinating anything. But I got four of them romas, and they the same way. The earlier leaves, which I done pulled off the bottom, except like this one. See what that look, guys? I'm talking about the whole tomato plants. Everything in my garden looked like that. I'm talking about everything. But now the new leaves is looking better. That's why I think it was... I don't really think it's a disease. I think it's with the 
being so saturated wet in the heat from the sun them days it did come out now the next six tomatoes right here is red snappers and they're actually doing the best at baking tomatoes right now than any of them that red snapper that's a cicada seed and you see I planted six of them and they got nice tomatoes coming on them so they're doing the best at putting on the tomatoes early with the weather we've been through And they done the best in this wet, nasty weather. The leaves, y'all can see down bottom, I didn't take as many leaves off as I did the other ones trying to get all that mess off. You can see this one still. And if that ain't sun skull, if some of y'all know what this is, let me know. But I don't think it's no blight because it's only, it was everything. It wasn't just tomatoes. It was everything all over this garden. Next trellis has got rattlesnake green beans both sides. The next two tomatoes left and right is the Florida 91s. And like I said, they're all looking good now. And they're, they're loaded with blooms. I just need some bees. Got a couple of good tomatoes coming on over there. Good cluster of tomatoes on this one. And then the last two in these cages is the Purple Boy. That's another new one to me, my first time to try, called a Purple Boy. I love Cherokee tomato, but Cherokee's an heirloom tomato. And I'm going to tell you, if they'd have been heirloom tomatoes out here right now, this year, yeah, the whole things with heirloom tomatoes is so hard to grow. Well, so many diseases and stuff. But the purple boy here is supposed to be a hybrid. I guess they may have created it from the Cherokee, but it looks kind of like the Cherokee and supposed to taste like the Cherokee. Well, that got my attention when I was reading about it. You can see it's got little tomatoes on there, but I got something going on right here. Got a worm out here. And see, that's something else I ain't been able to spray. I can't spray because we ain't got a day not when it ain't raining long enough. I opened that up. I opened that little tomato up, but I didn't see no worm in there. I guess I can spray in the rain. I'm going to turn and go back down through here. The first row here is six cabbages I've just planted in the row. And then the rest of them, I think, was crowder peas. I planted on this row. I think I had all crowder peas that day I planted them. And then starting down the last row here, there's a black beauty eggplant. It's starting to show some life. Don't look so bad. But it took it forever. This little tomato right here, I ain't a hundred percent sure which one it is. It may be one of them that I dug up that was coming up over here by my sink. Seemed like that's what that was. Then we got another little, I think that's one of them little carnival peppers. Which I got a bed that'll be on part two. This here is a fairy tale eggplant that grows the little purple eggplants. And all this made its big change in the last week. Now here's another one of them criminal yellow squash that's supposed to grow up right. You can see this one's making squash over here. But I'm going to show you all again. This is what everything in my garden looks like. And worse, you can see all the leaves down there. They all, everything. Until we started getting the sunshine a couple of days at a time break before they started making new leaves and looking like something. 
Uh, next two tomato plants right here is Celebrity Plus. I've never grown them. So I got two of them right here in the soil. Y'all see how the bottom leaves is curling up? And I know there's a hundred different things that could be that makes tomatoes curl up. First one somebody's gonna say is herbicide. Especially when you see my dead grass around things in my yard. But if that, if that herbicide done that tomato, then y'all tell me why it didn't get that tomato. That's why I tell it's not herbicide. If it was herbicide, that tomato would be curled just as bad as all these leaves on this one's curled. And that one beside it ain't all curled. I don't think that herbicide's going to drift. And, and, and get just this, this tomato this close together. And that's just my opinion about that. Now we're getting to our hydroponic buckets. This is my summer danced cucumber. That once I discovered this cucumber, I always planted, which I got another trellis over there started to be on part two video. And I love how that's working in this hydroponic bucket, growing straight up that string. And guys, believe it or not, it don't grow and hang over. It'll grow, and once it gets about six, eight inches, I already have a clip, so if I walk out here in the garden looking, I can clip it. Now, what may happen with that? It may get long enough to go to the top. If it does, I come across, and I'll put another strain back down and come down between them buckets and let it come back to the ground. Now, I don't think it's going to go up there that high and back to the ground. It'd be too hot by then. Then, of course, there's the little carnival blend, confetti, whatever it is. They're both the same, carnival blend and confetti pepper. But I'm sure thinking about maybe taking that one out and starting me a late cucumber in this bucket. The next tomato is the Italian ice. Or the reason I'm doing that tomato again, I hated it three years ago when I planted it, but I had them seeds, and I said, well, I'm going to give it one more chance. Supposed to be the white tomato, huh? I'll pop y'all a picture of him. But look how jumbled up that tomato's growing. It ain't even make no blooms nowhere down in here, but got blooms coming on top. Hocinator bell. Actually, I know to make these do better, you paint the peppers off. And I will the ones over there in my robe. The one in the hydroponic bucket, I'm going to leave this one alone and let it grow. Then we got a Black Beauty eggplant. That was one that almost got pulled out one day. So it's, even though the leaves are looking better, it just, guys, that's horrible looking to me. There's a, Gatorina cabbage. The only reason I've done it, I'm just testing out the hydroponic bucket. And I may be doing wrong on this because I'm mixing the same strength solution and using the Master Blend tomato formula in all of these hydroponic buckets, even though they got different things in them. The last two tomatoes, this one right here is the Hocinator 2255. Y'all see how much better that tomato's doing? How it's growing faster than the ones in the ground? Got tomatoes on it. But this one's got curly leaves. Again, look at them curly leaves. And when you start hollering herbicide, there's a Celebrity Plus right back. You don't see no curly leaves. You see beautiful leaves. And they, they the one these tomatoes getting nothing that the other one ain't getting. But the Celebrity Plus has got tomatoes on it and a lot of blooms. Now 
outside row with the pots here. We got some curly parsley. Then we got thyme, and that's been going on for three years, and I don't know how in the world that thyme made it through the last two winters when it got down to 10 degrees one night this last winter. But we don't need thyme. I got thyme dehydrated, a whole quart jar full of it. But I just keep letting it grow. That right there is some type of oregano. I had to replant that this year. And then the cilantro here, which is shooting up, been to go to seed. Oh, look at that grass I didn't pull out of there. But that's shooting straight up. Really just planted that so it'd be some fresh cilantro leaves if wife wanted to use any because I got dehydrated cilantro too. This pot I had some celery in. Well, it didn't make it. So the other day when I planted my okra, I come out here. No, not the same day I planted the okra, I'm sorry. One day I was planting the corn in that last bed that ain't come up on the second part over there. I planted some make red burgundy okra in here just to see how how much okra I could get out of just one pot. Y'all know how I love to experiment and try different things. Then we got our garlic chives. That's been there for years. I just Every now and then I take the hedger and give it a haircut. This year I'm going to let it go wild. Then right here where I had my old garlic bed, I had a bunch of stuffed over onions. Mixed. This is a mixture of onions. I ain't even going to try to tell you what onions them are. But that's just a mixture of different type of onions. Because onions, to me, it don't matter what variety they are. If you want a little green onion, you just pull them young as you want them. And then the big blackberry bush. Boy, is it loaded this year. Loaded, loaded, loaded. And the thing is, are they going to turn black? Or are they going to dry up on me and fall off? There's one another one right there, and still got a little purple tint. Hey, that's the problem I'm finding. By the time they get black, they either the birds get them, or they dry up. Which anyway, they are loaded. Turning back to her right. This is the other Italian ice. And I got one in a hydroponic bucket. Now, you can see this one in the soil is doing better than the Italian ice in the hydroponic bucket. Whereas the Hysonator and the Celebrity Plus is doing better in the hydroponic bucket. Or growth wise than them out in the soil. Right here to the left is some of that let us see that I throw randomly. And it's actually coming up, but it right there I may have to get me one one last salad out of there because I still got some radishes I pulled the other day. I may have to get me a bowl of fresh salad with a little bit of that spinach for it runs over there. But this is my summer dance. Cucumbers. You can see I got two good cucumbers coming on already. But again, if you look at all the bottom leaves, that's what all this mess looks like. And it may look like it again because we're supposed to get rain, I think. Pretty much every other day for the next week they showing again. I got little cucumbers over here. So the summer dance cucumbers has always done me well. Now this tomato right here where I planted my favorite eating tomato for a snack tomato, the Honey Delight. And guys, that tomato plant that was planted right here, 
was just as tall as every one of them down through there. Looked just as good as every one of them down through there. And that day that we got that flash flood, it flooded in about two hours. I'm talking about, I forgot how many inches fell in like two hours, less than two hours, like four inches, the first first two hours. That tomato plant, when I come out here that morning, looked just as good as all of them. I come back out here the next morning, that tomato plant was wilted down like you sprayed it with ground up. But nothing else done. Only thing I can figure out is this bed held water under there and it drowned that tomato. That's the, that's the only thing I can come up with. But nothing spread, but no fertilizer put out, but no feed put out, but was nothing. <laughs> was it nothing? And that tomato plant died overnight and it was about that tall when it happened. So that tomato plant in there right now, y'all see this tomato plant right here? There's one right there. And I done dug up. That's what I said. I think that's where that can come from. It was one of the first ones I dug up. So I'm hoping since I had the honey delight planted here last year, that's what these are. But it could be I had that sweet 100 right there last year. And Lord, I hope it ain't that because I didn't like them little things. They good tasting, but they just, they, I don't, anyway, I didn't, I didn't like them. So I'm hoping that ain't what these two plants are. We ain't got but two more things to look at, guys. This is my Tommy Teo. I bought that plant early, planted it out, and when I done one of my first garden videos, somebody in the comment told me I needed more than one Tommy Teo plant to pollinate each other. Well, I didn't know that. And I looked it up, and it's said it because i ain't never grew a tommy teo i thought i'd grow it my wife may want to make her some of that sauce out of it so i went back later and got these two which you can see <laughs> they ain't that tall but they got bloom so maybe we'll get a lot of tommy teos off of it and then i got some random kale coming up on each end of it I got a lot of wild stuff coming up, and guys, what's amazing to me, the stuff that's coming up on its own, which is just now coming up at the end of April and May, looks better than the stuff that I tried to get started too early. Now, one of the last things on this part one is my sugar sweet peas. They're loaded down. Me and Colton stood out here yesterday for 30 minutes. I picked him up after school. I picked him up after school, guys, and I like taking these and just eating them. But little man Colton, he'll sit here and peel these open, and I'll be peeling them for him. He loves eating these peas right straight out of that hole. Y'all ain't been getting to see Colton much on videos no more because he's in weak care this year. And then there's other things changed in his life to where, well, just say Papa don't get to keep him as much as I used to. And me or him, neither one likes that. But I told him the other day, I said, baby, before you realize that you're going to be old enough, you can come here all you want. Just hang on. And ain't nothing I can do about it, but pray about it. But anyway... Guys, like I was telling y'all, that this garden had me so depressed, and I know I tried to get started too early, which I always do. And I keep saying I ain't gonna plant nothing out next year till May. But literally up until the middle of a April, them nights in them 40s and low 50s, and then all this rain, just one right after another. This garden had me so depressed, I, I just wanted to just pull it all up and say forget it. And that's basically what I did. Y'all hear that thunder? So the part two may not be coming up today, unless it's this afternoon. 
But I did give up on the the cool weather stuff, the lettuce, trying to get cauliflower. Usually I always doing better in the spring with my cauliflower, cabbage, broccoli than I do in the fall. Cause the fall's the opposite. We up there at 100 degrees, and then when you try to plant something and get it going, it's so hot, and then all of a sudden here comes that first, they say frost, but most time it's a outright freeze. That'll kill if you're starting too early. But then we go back into summertime for another two months with a random frost food in there. So I always doing better trying growing my cabbage and stuff in the spring. And y'all can look back on my videos. I always had Katarina cabbage. Cauliflower is always a little later in the spring. Didn't get no real big heads, but I got small heads. So this year, I was just, I'm like, well, something, I done overdone my soul. It's just something ain't right with my soul. Now, whether it is or not, that's why I'm planting the corn and beans in every bed out here. And I'm going to continue to do it as the squash and every peppers when they done. I'm going to plant whatever winter peas or something just to try to use up the nutrients in that soil. And then after winter time and that dies down i'm gonna cover these beds with plastic or something because this winter because this winter some of my beds i put some straw in when it was getting down there in them teens to try to save my onions and different things which i ended up losing two beds of them but now i got more weeds in my bed from putting that straw in there i wish i'd never put that straw in there Guys, this is the end of part one. A couple of days behind this video, you'll be seeing the part two, which is that side of the garden. And probably the outside of the garden. It won't take as long as talking about it this side. But if you have any ideas, comment. Tell me what I done done wrong. <laughs> Y'all know I'm all about experimenting and trying different things. That's why that hydroponic buckets this year i got to looking at stuff like that and i said i got to get me some of them remember the b-boy brand there i always leave links in the description below my videos anything i'm using or showing just in case somebody wants to copy it but i'll see y'all on part two quit just like it Woo! time to get out of here This is what we've been getting about three times a week, seems like, for the last two months. It ain't just showers. 